Okay, so I am scrying the word Yimon, which is Y-M-O-N, which is one of the two additional names on the Sigillum de Ameth. And I am just told to be very still and to even allow my hands to drop to my lap. And they are going ahead and saying to assume the God pose. And there's definitely something palpable. And I'm feeling a rushing coming down through me and down through my entire body. And it's like this cycle is repeating. It's coming down now through my feet and then back up down through my crown chakra and down through my body over and over and over again. So I definitely feel as if um, a current is flowing through me in a very steady way. And it's basically following the outline of my body. And for lack of a better term, it, fe it does feel Egyptian. So this is sort of confirming Yiman, Amen, Amen. And it's continuing. And it's increasing in intensity. So bearing in mind that this is the call to the aethers of, so you heavens which dwell in this additional name found in the circumference. And I'm feeling an opening up in my crown chakra. It is conical. And it's growing in intensity a little bit. And it's feeling like there's a flowing down through into my skull. And it's pausing at my lips, but it's coming down to my heart. And there's a real reckoning with the divine here. So before this, I have already called the Aether, or I've used the call to the Aethers to call forward the Lil of the heart. And so there's a reckoning and it feels, um, it's almost as if there's this dark liquid. It's almost like ink. And it's reminding me of, I want to say it was Tiamat, whichever deity it was who measured the depth of the, the heft or the weight of the heart against the feather. And it's seeming like it is like this dark liquid drink that is within it. And it is slowly being clarified and purified by the heart. And it is sort of upwardly cleansing. It's as if my heart is upwardly cleansing this dark liquid, which I have been called to call upon via this name. And what I'm sensing in, in this happening is that it's like this upper vessel, this upper cone here is like a vessel and the deity is dipping a chalice into it. And he's, you know, sort of sniffing it. He's allowing the work that my heart, it's, it's almost as if it's this slow going chemical reaction. He's sniffing it and he's allowing it and he's sensing, it's like in the smelling of it, he can smell all of the things going on within my heart to allow um, that, that subtle uh, essence of working through your heart, working on that. And he can see all of the things that I've been going through and working on, working with, working through. And finally, it's, it's seeming cleansed. It's very clear liquid. And he's taking it up and he's like drinking it. And it's like he's 
spreading out these wings and I am sensing like this uh, bird-like head, we'll call it like an ibis head, but I'm seeing him go through all of these iterations but kind of back to the ibis again. And he's sort of stretching out like through my astral body, you know, th through the entirety of the cosmos. And then coming back in and he's like really trying to get me to like physically feel in to the entirety of the universe. And it's as if he is um, trying to get me to understand or to not even understand, but uh, grok to use a, a Robert Heinlein word, um, the entirety of all and the, the majesty of all and this very transrational and transpersonal sense of himself working through the all that he is the creation of and the creator w with. And he's saying, you know, I am, I am basically like the Demiurge. I am the second, he is saying pretty explicitly. So we're looking at the second call, uh, the second of the first, and it's a beautiful feeling. And it's like now there's like this, a little bit of a spinning beginning at the heart. And this is something that I've seen um, in other um, people describing spiritual experiences of the heart kind of coming up and spinning up like this, and then the heart below spinning the opposite way, but it all sort of wraps around in a torus or a toroid uh, configuration. And, but he's telling me not to stop there. He's saying spread out. So it's not just that this, he's saying basically spread out don't limit yourself to that particular heart configuration. So there's a real geometric thing that he's really trying to impress upon me. So he's saying, what if this were a configuration that, um, that included this tetrahedron? What would that look like? And so I'm seeing like a bunch of tetrahedra <laughs> coming out and in all of these multi-dimensional spaces it's very much it's very much feeling like an mc escher drawing uh but it's very it's very vast and i mean it's basically again trying to take in the entire cosmos of this massive um geometric lattice and it's all tetrahedra uh that i'm like moving through right now and he's saying, this is the, the energy to move in. This is reminding me very much of what people have described DMT to be like. Um, and it's like, I'm sensing it first up here and then down here as well. Um, but generally speaking, it's this vast, um, it's very bright on the one hand, but it's this vast uh, space that is just very much filled geometrically like this. And he's saying, move your heart like this. So as I um, make this effort so that the, the motion of the energetic motion that is coming up through my heart into this vast field, um, it's like suddenly a lot of extra things are springing forth. And it's almost as if... Um, you know, the, the analogy that I can give is that it's almost as if the work that I was doing, it did sprout this, this sapling, but the sapling was starting to wilt a little bit. And now it is like rushing up in massive growth. Um, this is like Jack and the Beanstalk level of 
growth and expansion and not just in like getting bigger but getting broader in new and um in again in this these massive geometric ways and so i'm also seeing he's saying you could go this way with like hyper uh cubes that would be fine but he's also showing me more importantly um these higher dimensional uh equivalents of the dodecahedra and he's saying that's also a really good thing to shoot for so either this uh simplex this you know the five cell or the six cell or the tetrahedron or he's saying um you know expand your heart out with um into into higher dimensional versions of the dodecahedron i believe the 120 cell is for example a version of that and the 600 cell is a version of that um, but he's saying that in so doing um there will be he's just saying it's the right thing to do <laughs> he, he was about you know it was like starting to do that and then like my own verbal limitations it was like can't can't talk about it yet you know because you're not you don't have the vocabulary yet to get into that until you've actually done the work but he is saying that it's worthwhile and again he's showing himself spreading these massive wings and he's he's just reminding me this takes in all of creation much as you have done with the from a very spherical sort of way now he's saying let's get into doing this but with um larger kinds of geometric structures and then you will be able to touch upon this part and he's just again adopting the buddhist language he's saying you'll be able to use the um this space that you've occupied between dharmakaya and sambhogakaya and between sambhogakaya and nirmanakaya you'll be able to traverse that much more easily and you'll be able to find these spaces that are causing problems and be able to make a little tweak there and suddenly create new possibilities new uh, things that can happen um he's very much uh to call it encouragement is sort of it's it's the exact right word but when it's divine encouragement it's very difficult to put into words because there instead it's like he's giving a feeling of rightness to the heart so um with that he's winding things down he is saying go ahead and now make the call except this time uh, calling bore so thus ends the vision